Hello and welcome to the CNBC Africa Special, where we are discussing financial inclusion in Rwanda. I'm um, Godfrey Mutizwa. Now, according to World Bank data, in 2014, more than half of Rwandans over the age of 15 had no accounts. 26% had formal savings, while just 8% had borrowings. So the question is, what primary instruments do we need to drive financial inclusion in Rwanda and ensure that the whole population has access to financial services and who should be driving it? More importantly, perhaps, uh, what should be the role of regulators and issues like technology? Welcome to this debate. Let me introduce my panel. I'll start from my immediate right. We've got uh, the Vice Governor of the Central Bank of Rwanda, uh, Dr. Monique Nzazab. Baganwa. Uh, she is, uh, as I said, on my right. Next to her, we've got uh, David Karuletwa, Chief Operations Officer at uh, R-Switch. And next to him, we've got uh, uh, Jackie Omugwaneza, Executive Secretary from the Rwanda's Bankers Association. Thank you, ma'am, and welcome. And last but not least, we've got uh, Eric Rigwamba. He's Director General, Financial Sector Directorate at the Ministry of Finance in Rwanda. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us. And I'm very glad I'm able to say ladies and gentlemen on a panel. Yeah. It's always a struggle because you find an imbalance between men and women. Yeah. Vice Governor, I want to start with you. I want to get a sense of where we stand at the moment. My statistics tell a story that suggests that there's a lot of opportunity to deepen financial inclusion in Rwanda. Is it as dire as that? Yeah, financial inclusion is uh, one of um, the developmental goals of this country. And um, when we talk of financial inclusion, we should um, be mindful of that we have uh, measures when we, we have commercial banks, for instance, or any other uh, financial institutions. Uh, in Rwanda, we have uh, key institutions like um, these um, Umure and Savings and uh, cooperative and uh, credit cooperatives. Uh, we have also other means of including people like through mobile financial services and so on and so forth. Uh, we have, um, um, in terms of access, the branches, the, 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 the agents, uh, banking, uh, and so on and so forth. So when we talk of really numbers, uh, you, you, you mentioned um, a figure from the World Bank, and uh, I'm glad to announce that there is um, a study coming uh, very, very soon, I think uh, early next year or, or so. That is going to, to show us really where we stand. The latest figures. Yeah, the, the latest figures. But uh, suffice to say that uh, financial inclusion in Rwanda, uh, when we look at the numbers of accounts, we are now around 5 million accounts. Uh, when we look at the, this um, ratio of um, number of accounts per 1,000 adult people, we have um, uh, uh, around uh, above, above 300 um, numbers of account. Uh, when we look at um, the branch network, when we look at really these policies like agency banking, really we think that financial inclusion uh, in Rwanda is, uh, I in terms of numbers, is bigger than what we have on the records today. Okay. Because the last um, statistics uh, were captured in 2012. Yes. But um, uh, we, we know that uh, we have also to deal with this issue of total exclusion. Yes. Total exclusion, you deal with it um, uh, by tackling those are who are not accessing any form of financial services whatsoever, yeah. being and formal a large and informal. Of those people. No, in 2012, we had only 28% total exclusion. 28%. And we had we were like second or something after South Africa. Right. To, in, to Africa. Uh, in Africa. Uh, so it, which is not bad. But uh, the problem in Rwanda was a big chunk of um, uh, the, the, the inclusion was still in the informal. Okay. Uh, and, and that's where we have to really deal with how to make those who are financially included f informally yeah. also come to the net of the form of financial inclusion. Absolutely. Yeah. So there's work to be done. There's good work that has been done. There's work to be done. Eric, let me come to you and ask from uh, a ministry perspective whether those numbers are what you originally set out uh, to achieve when you began the process of trying to make sure that everyone then has access to financial services and where you also want to see those numbers going into the future. Uh, thank you so much. 
I think for me, first of all, it comes with excitement. When you look at where we are coming from and where we are today yes. and where I want to go, it gives everyone reason to, to be hopeful that we are on the right path. Um, I just want to touch on when you talk about a bank account, for the purpose of uh, probably this discussion, I want us to widen the financial inclusion scope and okay. talk about a bank account. But let's talk about also insurance, talk about pension, talk about yes. uh, uh, other financial services. Yeah, other products. Other products. And, and so where we are today, I think the numbers for us are exciting, but uh, that's not enough because we think financial inclusion the way we have positioned it in Rwanda becomes a strong pillar for economic development yeah. and property mm -hmm. reduction. So touching on what the, the uh, vice government touched on, on informal uh, financial inclusion. For us, it's a good thing in one way because it touches on lives of our people. Right. But also, I think it's very important for the uh, sound and the st stable financial systems and the macroeconomic uh, considerations to drive these people into the informal sector. Yeah. Uh, or, or, the or, or the formal financial systems. Right. And that is where our attention is now because that dry gives you the comfort that you, everyone is in one basket, yeah. so the fin is, is in the same financial system. And so there's a lot that we can do with it. Yeah. And that touches on, on, on the issue of how do we then get them into from informal to formal. Right. And we are looking at that from the technology perspective. Yeah. How can we leverage on technology? We are also looking at it from a niche of engaging, I think, our financial service providers, yeah. right products and services that can convince these people that uh, what you have in the informal setup yeah. can actually uh, give you more gains if you move into the, inf the formal one. Right. What are your broad targets in terms of uh, getting everyone then maybe an account or something like that? I would imagine you must have broadly a roadmap that takes you there. The government of Rwanda has committed to do to have 80% uh, uh, financially included by 2017, 2018. Do you think you'll be able to keep your job and achieve those targets? Yes. <laughs> yes, because of what we are doing and what we are setting okay. up. Okay. Uh, I'll give you just a t uh, an example of it is that we are doing two things. One from a demand side, another one from a, a supply side. From the demand side, we think when you look at what we have achieved, Rwandans are yearning for more. Mm. And so what we're just trying to do now is equipping them with the right skills, with the right knowledge, basic knowledge on these financial matters. Sure. And that's through, from, uh, that, that is through financial education and the financial literacy programs and campaigns. Okay. And we have taken it all the way from even schools. So we have included the financial education uh, themes in the school curriculum to, to develop the generation that is well equipped with these basics. Sure. And then we have a program for the adults. And that is now focusing on rural people because we think that, that, that are kind of uh, lagging behind. On the demand side, we are trading on technology. Right. So we want all these, um, the, the, the cooperative, uh, the, the, the savvy and the credit cooperatives uh, and the microfinance to start moving away from the manual processes mm. to automated processes. Okay. When you get that level, and then you're able to roll out now more other products like okay. agent banking, mobile payment, mobile yeah. banking, POS, and the ATM. And we think uh, the plans on the ground are very yeah. promising. You're comfortable. Jackie, let me come to you. He talks of 80% financial inclusion as a target. From where you sit as the banks, do you see the policy environment enabling you to be able to help them reach that target? Are there issues perhaps that we ought to address uh, that will enable us to reach the target that he's talking about? Or is he just perhaps uh, talking a little bit of a pie in the sky here? Uh, <laughs> uh, I, think, I think it is... Um is an achievable number uh, basing on, uh, on uh, the work already that have been right. uh, done by the government policy the policies that have been uh, put in place the laws the the laws in place uh, we have a new laws in on, gr on the ground we have uh, uh, like uh, if I can maybe give an example of um, one of the the key laws that have uh, have uh, are playing a, a big role on the yeah. financial inclusion, like um, the the law on movable corrupt laws, 
and uh, the, the law on mortgage, uh, the leasing loans. Okay. Those are uh, those are enabling really tools for for financial inclusion because uh, our client have been very struggling to get uh, loans when they don't have collateral and securities. Uh, another enabling environment is the 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 fund, the government fund that have been put in place and uh, which is BDF. BDF is a guarantee fund uh, enabling um, those people who wanted to access finance and uh, and, and, and don't have uh, enough capacity. Yeah. There is a fund uh, that uh, the the government has set up and uh, is really working together with banks to to to, to to give to give value to to that inclusion yeah 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 erica think and vice governor from what she's saying you've got a very happy client here zero complaints she's happy with the laws that you guys are putting in and there's progress that's being made let me come to you mr disruptor um <laughs> david because <laughs> you are coming in and muscling in on an area where the banks have had it their way for years and we know what the banks do and they are allowed to do what they want to do when you look at the environment that we have now, are you satisfied, like she is, about the environment? Or are there perhaps ways in which perhaps the vice governor can think about creatively that will open up the field even more to allow you to be able to take your services to the people? Thank you. Um, I think, and on my side, coming from a switch perspective, uh, I'm equally as happy. Um, we all joined at the hip. Um, the With who? We all joined the hip in terms with, of with the, the public and the private sector. Oh, the public and private sector. So okay, okay, okay. enabling factors from legislation, from the regulator, yeah. um, have facilitated private sector to do what they do, invest it with belief that there will be a return on investment. Sure. Um, we're using technology to disrupt, like you said at the beginning, uh, but it's offering using technology to offer financial services. Right. It's not just about allowing the banks to sell to their customers yeah. and vice versa and be banked but also allowing the end users to be able to trade to facilitate trade in terms of payment sure. in, in terms of taxes i think that is where the excitement is within rwanda is right. that it is really a gem when you have everything coming together from the private side and the public side yeah. allowing innovation to humbly yeah. invest with, with, with the confidence of return. Yeah. Uh, at the same time, you're seeing uh, interoperability taking fruit here because we don't want to have silos of, of an, or clusters of financial mm. exclusion. Mm. We want all these clusters to actually interact. And that is where the ecosystem grows yeah. in terms of financial inclusion. Are there still silos in the system that you want broken down? I think we've we've come a long way from when we started this. Uh, we start again speaking from the switch perspective is yes. that we we ensured that first of all connectivity between all the financial services uh, are inclusive. Uh, on mm -hmm. the ATM channels, uh, everybody's connected uh, using debit cards. On the POS channels, now everybody's connected, and now we want the biggest uh, elephant in the room, if I may call it, Please, the mobile financial down. services. <laughs> exactly, is mobile. mobile. Mobile services. Uh, mobile services. Yes. I mean, you have uh, over 6 million active accounts that are in, in the country uh, in a population of 11.8 million people. Um, if you couple that on an exponential value where East Africa is now harmonizing, uh, it's 147, 150 million people. Mm. That market exponential factor allows more trade to be harnessed. Yeah. And this is being used on a hub and spoke allowing real-time clearance of transactions. So if I want to buy uh, a, 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 a ton of potatoes, yeah. uh, I can pay in real time sure. for it to be delivered this evening. If I would like to pay taxes, uh, I'm not sure if you saw in the Transform Africa booths uh, something called uh, Irembo, which is uh, Rwanda Online. This is where the interaction now from the private sector and the taxes yeah. starts taking effect. Uh, I can pay my taxes more conveniently using my mobile. Right. Or I can go to an agent and pay with cash or a card or any form factor that is allowable to me. So I think once you start reducing the cash in the economy using this digitized form factor, yeah. then you start allowing people to enjoy both uh, their obligations in taxes sure uh, because it comes back to them absolutely but also it allows them to be able to be sold insurance products mm -hmm. from the uh, w I, just as an example we're working with one of the large insurance companies here in rwanda and uh, they asked us how could we uh, facilitate them to 
you know, engage more into the market. They're pretty new to the mm -hmm. market. So we said, well, you could actually sell real-time policies yeah. on the mobile, sure. on an ATM, Absolutely. at an agent. So that is the inclusion yeah. that we're allowing for the bottom of the pyramid. That needs to be. Let's address this element in the room, Vice Governor. If I may start with you, Eric, please feel free to come in as well. What measures are we putting in place to make sure that we actually enable our mobile phone services to do perhaps even more than it has been able to do to date? And are there any impediments perhaps that you can think of that you can see from your side that would need to be addressed to enable this? While of course thinking about your overall responsibility, which means maintaining the integrity as well as the stability of the system. Yeah, um, let me start by saying that uh, this um, animal <laughs> Is um, is not that dangerous animal? It is Actually, not. It's not an elephant. It, it's not. What is it's it? It's not. And, would you and call it? Will you will you call it an antelope, or perhaps <laughs> <laughs> I don't something know. smaller? Uh, no, it, it's big. It's agile, and uh, it's also docile. It's our job as regulators. Actually, regulators we mean the central bank and um, the the regulator of utilities because we are two regulators of the of of of, um, of the, the the telcos us as a central bank coming in as far as mobile financial services are concerned right and uh, here we are talking of mobile banking not just the transfers mm -hmm. because the transfers are like um, facilitation but really until we have um, uh, mobile banking um, solutions then we cannot really Com confidently talk of um, uh, financial inclusion, that interoperability, and so on and so forth. Sure. So the model here is for the banking uh, channels, a telco uh, works uh, through or we in partnership with a bank. Okay. And uh, for for us, it's um, it's a safeguard in terms of safety, in in terms of um, stability of the system, sure. and so on and so forth. Uh, I'm seeing a lot of progress uh, happening, especially through the discussions um, uh, in, the, in the forum where interoperability is being discussed, negotiated. Uh, as a central bank, we are going through a, a, a learning curve yeah. in terms of really uh, listening to what the, the industry would or wish. Uh, and um, uh, they also from that private sector end, uh, come up with competing models, and then yeah. we go negotiate, or in the end to have something that is going to, to work for the public. Sure. Uh, uh, but um, uh, the, the, the key issues remain, like for instance, the cost. Yeah. I think we still have a lot of uh, work to do on the cost of the services, the charges that uh, are being charged. Uh, um, uh, we have, as Jackie, an I'm industry, at you. Uh, as an industry, <laughs> to, to be on top of cyber security issues, yeah, those yeah, are really yeah. issues we, 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 we cannot say that we, ha we are 100% um, uh, certain that we have uh, contained them. Yeah. They are constant yeah. because B this is a really highly innovative um, it's ever uh, sector and yeah. it's ever changing. So you have really to keep the pace yeah. with that and uh, to keep in that positive attitude as a regulator to listen what's coming up on the market, how can we accommodate it, yeah. how, what are the risks. Can we also take a risk as a central bank yes. uh, together with the, the industry so that uh, it's a risk that is calculated. Yeah. So I think that's the mood we are in it, and I see it happening all over in, in East Africa and uh, and even uh, across Africa. We have this uh, AMPI forum where the governors and the policymakers and the, the CEOs meet to discuss. What you hear in those discussions is uh, really um, regulators now are aware of this um, technology, what it can do for us in terms of financial inclusion, right. in terms of really bringing on the net uh, people who are who are in the informal, and from also the monetary uh, policy perspective, it's good yeah. because if you if you have a, a, a big portion of the currency outside 
the, uh, the, the, the system, circulating outside the system, yeah. then you cannot even effectively True. handle your monetary policy. Absolutely, uh, your transmission well. mechanism so, becomes yeah, the compromised. transmission mechanism becomes uh, compromised. And even th those investments we are talking about, once we have really th those pooled resources, uh, then we can, uh, we can um, achieve that, uh, th that um, efficiency yeah. in allocation of resources at the macro level. Sure. And uh, progressively we can see uh, like the interest rates coming down because now we are having a bigger and bigger pool. Yeah. So yeah. I'm uh, hearing collaboration, Eric. Do you want to add anything else to that? Yes. Um, I, I think for me, uh, um, what is very exciting in Rwanda right now is, is worth living. Uh, it's, it's, it's important if you look at even the role that the government's playing. And the probably I think we should, this is a time when we, sh we should be proud of our government. Uh, when we have the You're national... speaking like a civil servant. <laughs> You're speaking like uh, someone living in Rwanda. <laughs> when you look at countries struggling to have a one um, national ID system that can deal with the KYC issues, and for us that is history. When you talk about uh, technology and the, 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 the connectivity moving faster to reach to closer to people, that is for me what we are talking about here. So the, the infrastructure that is being put in place yeah. is very important. That he, because some countries, including countries like India, they are struggling with the KYC issues. How do you know that this person that will transfer the money? So. Then when, to, when, when we are at the time when banks and MNOs are talking to each other, yeah. and the switches are talking to each other, and the central bank and the policy uh, makers are in one room saying, we know there are these, these issues. How do we uh, put in place mitigations to ensure that the system is sound and secure? Yeah. I mean, that's exciting. Yeah. The risks will always be there. But what is very important, again, is that as we talk about financial inclusion, and we talk about this kind of um, uh, initiatives that are in place. For me, what comes to, 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 my, to my heart is customer satisfaction. Right. So when we, today we have a situation where refugees, incomes, are able to receive their money through mobile payments, mobile money. That, for me, is what you're talking about, mm -hmm. transforming lives mm -hmm. of people. Mm -hmm. If we have pensioners that have gone to live on their farms, and they're able to receive their money without to coming to city, to the city to get their money. Yeah. And it's possible through payment systems. They're the people who are dealing with security and yeah. they should do their job. Yeah. The point is lives are changing. Okay. I want us to talk about two issues here that I think are at the heart of the discussion. One is costs, and uh, the, the vice governor did touch on it, you did touch on it as well. Uh, the issue of costs, especially servicing the disadvantage, especially servicing those who are in the informal sector. You speak of refugees, the vulnerable. How do we manage costs and how do we spread those costs evenly so that we're able to reach everybody? I came across a study that suggested that in Southern Africa, for a bank to operate uh, an account for people in the informal sector, they lose about $2.79 per account. Who should bear that cost? How do we mitigate against that loss? I think, uh, as I said, the starting point is a discussion. Dialogues. If we have everyone on the table, we have done an exercise with the, the switches and the, and, and the banks where we locked our office and said, okay, let's break down these costs. Yes. Who takes what? Because the switches take the, the MNOs, the, the banks, and other. Who, who is taking the big share of this cost? Yes. And for me, that discussion. What have you found? It is very confidential. Uh, oh. <laughs> but but uh, the, 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 I think the point I want to. Is it the to, banks? No, the point I want to, uh, to, <laughs> go want to, 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 to make here that if the fact that the services are existing yeah. is a step forward. The fact that the players are talking together sure. is important. Yeah. But let me also speak like a, 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 um, a, as if I want to pretend that they don't deserve it. Assuming this refugee or the, this old man on his farm so many kilometers was to to drive or to board the public mean to come to get the money. Yeah. What will be the cost? So, what am I saying here? The discussion on how can we minimize the cost is very critical. Yeah. It's been in terms of financial inclusion, but let's also celebrate 
what we have achieved. Sure. Can, can, can governments, do you want to come in? Can, can governments take part of the cost? I'm going to suggest that we should share part of the cost as government. You should pick up some of that cost. But uh, Jackie, you want to come in? I wanted to come in, uh, in uh, actually talking, uh, uh, saying about uh, uh, costs. Cost actually uh, is, is, is something that plays with numbers. As, as, as numbers are growing, as m more people are joining the systems, are yeah. joining the, yeah. the banking, the financial sector, uh, for sure the cost is going to go down. Uh, I'm sure everyone knows about uh, uh, the, 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 the previous, in, in the last five years, uh, the, the cost of transferring the money with the, uh, tra trans uh, how do you call it, the, the money gram and uh, yeah. Western yeah. Union, the Western yeah, Union and was too very yeah. high because uh, the, they, the, they had a contract, they had uh, an exclusivity on this market. But with the, uh, well, with the, the policy open, uh, when they opened the policy, yeah. the, the prices uh, dropped down. Okay. It, this can happen as well. On this the can happen field. here. I think yeah. Eric and the Vice Governor should be taking uh, that into account. Unfortunately, we've run out of time. Uh, I see your hand, David. We'll have to come back on the other side after the break. I want us to continue this discussion around costs and see if we can perhaps, apart from understanding the breakdown, that we can't get details on ways in which perhaps we can fairly spread the cost. But of course, we must also talk about the other big issue, which is technology and the role that it plays in financial service. And of course, the other bigger issue, which is security. How do we balance all those things after the break? Welcome back here watching a CNBC Africa special debate on financial inclusion in Rwanda. In the studio with me, I have got uh, the Vice Governor of the Central Bank of Rwanda, Dr. Monique Nzanzabaganwa. I really worked hard to try to make sure that I get that pronunciation right. Uh, we also have uh, uh, Eric Rigwamba, Director General of Financial Sector in uh, the Ministry of Finance, and uh, Jackie Omugwaneza, Executive Secretary of Rwanda Bankers Association. And last but not least, uh, David uh, Karuleto, Chief Operating Operations Officer at Arasuch. And I want to speak with you, to start with you, David. You were very anxious to want to contribute to the debate around the costs. And before you answer it, I wanted to pose a particular question to you. The Vice Governor spoke about the fact that they are happier and they want the telcos to work through the banks in terms of uh, getting those products to market. Would you rather work alone without having to work with the banks? Actually, I don't think that's possible. I don't think anyone can work alone for a sustainable supply chain. Um, we actually work with the banks. And Does the that not inc increase the costs? No, actually what, what, uh, what decreases the costs is volume. Uh, if we go back to our Economics 101, is that the more participants in the system, uh, the lower the cost. That is if you're compounding the cost to one unit. So on a hub and spoke approach, where there's one person doing the work for everybody, technology-wise, is actually uh, a cost driver that goes down. So if I had a thousand people using the same system mm. versus a million people, it, it's cheaper for me sure. cost per unit wise to mm. serve those people. Mm. Mm. And uh, this comes back to allowing enough margin for you to always keep the eye on security. Right. Um, there, there, there are standards that we've always adhered to. We've been two, run, two years running at, as a payment cards industry certified vendor. Uh, which uh, in terms of the financial sector, it's a PCI DSS mm -hmm. certification. We have the highest version in East Africa. Um, those monitoring tools, uh, again, because you're using digitized form factors, yeah. is that you want to ensure that people's money is safe. That is number one. Uh, in banking, the first factor for you to be successful is trust. And right. people are feeling that their money is safe, then they're willing to forego that extra cost to ensure that they have the convenience to, to be able to access their funds anytime, anywhere, mm -hmm. but securely. So, um, Vice Governor, part of the debate around, okay, so the costs are, are one side of it. The other side of it is, of course, the issue that you just mentioned now, security. In the wake of uh, the uh, attacks that we saw in Paris, there's been another big debate that has exploded around uh, security and cyber security on the internet and uh, also the, the, the whole issue around encryption. And one of the big issues appears to be that for you to be able to create and maintain the perception that people's money is safe, 
you have to give them those assurances and that's got to come from companies. The debate has been raging. Do we trust government? Do we trust the private companies? Should Google encrypt? Should Apple encrypt? Should they not encrypt? If they encrypt, what are the repercussions for you maintaining your system stability and also at the same time being able to track illegal money and all these other things that come into the system? Yeah, I think the first step that the country has taken is really to to address this issue uh, from the highest level. Sure. Um, th there are legal provisions for, for this um, uh, problem and also institutional uh, setup. And the issue of standards, and uh, here I'm talking of the standards we enforce on the market, be it from the central bank perspective, but also from the, the utilities perspective. Those, uh, where I look at it, it's it's really high standards. I remember when we started this uh, card business, and we started requesting a chip and pin card, and it was a time where around us you 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 wouldn't see those cards, and the, the argument was why why Rwanda why would you look for 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 this technology which is like top notch? But we said. Rwanda deserves the best, and we, we aim high. Uh, maybe uh, I'm not uh, really that um, conversant with the, 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 the principles uh, for this uh, um, market infrastructure, uh, but I know that um, as a country, we are looking at ourselves, we are measuring how we are faring in East Africa, and uh, I'm, I'm really happy to see that uh, when we, we 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 assess ourselves yeah. we are we are not um, uh, in in a bad position sure. but not to say that there are no risks sure because the risks are, are everywhere there. and yeah. always there yeah. we must be uh, aware of that and institutions must have processes of how they handle that yeah. and as we do our oversight that's one of the things we look at how sure. how they are prepared yeah. how they are managing their risks how they are mitigating and so yeah. on and so forth sure. and uh, we also have um, collaboration among the industry on how we can crack down these uh, these issues of cyber security. So people work together. To what extent could security derail the drive to make sure that you connect everybody? I think for me it is two ways. Well, one is the real risk of the unwanted happening and the experience and then to the experience that, that it, it, it creates in the mindset of people. So I think in terms of standards, in terms of really making sure that the system is secure, I think that the team is doing a good job. But I think for me what is very interesting is do people, the consumer that we, te we tend to serve, mm. feel secure, feel mm. their money secure? Do they trust that their money is secure? They trust it. I remember so many years when the ATMs were, had just been introduced, yeah. people would walk in, go to the, uh, bank, deposit the money on the, on the counter, and then go around to go and withdraw it from the ATM and be sure <laughs> that the money is there. Then it comes back and deposit it. For me, it has been a in journey. In the process, the bank is making money. Exactly. <laughs> in the, but that is very important that people trust the system. So over time, we feel, I think, our people are trusting the system. Right. So we need to look at it from the two perspectives. Technically, figure out how to do it. Yeah. But the important thing, does this drive inclusion? Does it drive usage and uptake? Sure. Which translates into a uh, better life for the people. Yeah. Um, we're running out of time, and I don't want us to, to, to fail to discuss the other key issue that we ought to talk about. When we talk inclusion, of course, in this day and age, we have to talk about uh, financial inclusion and women. Do we have specific policies that address the inclusion of women uh, in, in, in financial services and also just in terms of accessing financial services. Vice Governor, do you want to come in on that? And I don't know if you want to come in and I'm not picking you out because there's been a whole debate about should women only talk about women issues or are there good men who can talk about women's you issues? So let me she. open it. Let me open it. He for she. <laughs> he, for she. Let's he for she. He for she. Let's yeah. begin with he. Yeah. Okay, David. Well, thank you for putting me on the spot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll take it with the brunt. I think... Um, even just as we are seated here, where Rwanda is really sensitive to gender balance, so um, I'm, I, I'm really at CNBC. Uh, at CNBC, thank and you, Vice Governor. <laughs> and we uh, we also see that uh, I am in a B two B two C kind of business approach right now. So I support the banks, and if you look at the banks' composure in, in terms of the different products that they're going out there, I think um, there's a lot of room to be done uh, on that on that uh, agenda, uh, targeting the women 
in terms of a driver for mm -hmm. economic uh, poverty reduction and also yeah. uh, financial inclusion. Sure. But just by mere factor of the way we govern, it just comes with it. And you see uh, in every decision maker uh, group, uh, you will see a huge, if not more, yeah. women than men. Yeah. Uh, in my company, we, are, we have more women than men in the, com the company, okay. uh, from middle managers down also. So I'm, I'm looking at it as um, we're not there yet, yeah. but we're, we're really ahead of the curve in yeah. terms of uh, where we need to go. Absolutely. But yeah. not just any women, Jackie, isn't it? Because you are very different to the lady who's out in the rural areas on her coffee farm. Uh, uh, true, I'm very different from them, but um, I think I uh, think it's it's it, I think it was the I'm start we I'm starting to say as a as private sector person, but I think the policymakers are the one driving on the trying to to take to give direction for for on the market. Yeah. Of course, the the banks are, uh, are trust more uh, women than than men. Because they, they are more, yeah, they do. They are more uh, uh, trustful, and uh, and uh, and uh, the NPLs on, on the side of women are, yeah. are very are, are very low. Uh, that's a that's a finding from which would from mean banks. the cost of servicing women would be lower than be lo <laughs> lower than he. serving the he. Uh, but I think uh, there's no really specific, there's no really specific policy uh, for for women. From the bank. Though there's uh, there's uh, specific products. Banks okay. are developing specific products okay. for women, targeting women as a uh, as a, 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 a trustful niche yeah. and uh, and uh, a, a lower serviced niche and uh, I think some, some some of the banks are, are doing well uh, yeah. putting in place a product that that's uh, so maybe yeah. there's an opportunity there he can come in yeah I, I think he, the issue of gender in Rwanda for us we look at it from an inclusive economic participation bef before you talk about inclusive finance services so we come from the point why do people need financial services so we, we, I think the government is positioned to look at it from first prepare a, this lady or this young girl yeah. to, to have reasons why she should have need financial services. Sure. So, so the agenda is bigger than financial inclusion because we start with saying, are they in, encouraged to participate in, in economic activities? Right. When you do that, automatically they will demand the, the needs. Uh, I think you have really hit the nail on the head because one of the questions that I had is what is the best form of making sure that you spread financial inclusion as widely as possible within the, yeah, the, the, the population? It's economic inclusion. Exactly. And so from that point, for us, what we are trying to do, can we get our mothers and sisters into our cooperatives, into groups? Can you find them and give them knowledge on these financial matters and other health issues and, and other lifely uh, 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 components. When you do that, you position them ready to be attractive to financial institutions. Sure. So that is the approach uh, the government of Rwanda is looking at. And we think automatically financial inclusion becomes a tick box. Fantastic. Thanks very much indeed. Let's open up the debate to our audience. As I said, we do have an audience. Please, if you can raise your hand. We've got a microphone. Where is our microphone? Uh, we've got a microphone that you can then uh, pick up. Okay, Patrick has got the microphone, okay? The lady here has got a question. Um, guys, you confused me a little bit. I thought we agreed that she should they go to one specific place. But, okay, she says, she says you can sit down, sorry. Oh. Yes. But, okay, please go. Uh, thank you very much. My name is Karine Ngabira, I'm a financial economist. Um, I have two um, issues. One is a proposal on the in terms of collaterals. I was surprised no one um, tackled the issue of collaterals. We know that uh, our country uh, is a big chunk of, uh, of potential customers for banks, uh, SMEs. And uh, I have uh, recently I looked at uh, uh, a study was done by Minicom and uh, other stakeholders. The study says that uh, banks uh, do require 200 percent risk coverage ratio on the loans. That's so that Rwanda. means 
If you want 100,000, yeah. you need a quarter of 200,000. That's in Rwanda? That's in Rwanda. Okay. Uh, so I think it's a constraint. And uh, I also have an issue on how we are used to calculate the, the, the collaterals. Uh, if I'm not uh, mistaken, uh, <laughs> I stand to be corrected. Sure. But the regression of the central bank is to discount uh, the collateral. Uh, uh, whether it's a property, a commercial property is discounted at 50% of its value. And the residential uh, property is uh, discounted at 70%. Uh, however, the principle of the loan is calculated with its 30% as a risk coverage, mm. which means that uh, it's like we're depreciating the property and uh, trying to increase the loan. Mm. And this is uh, uh, mainly a constraint for, for people uh, accessing the loans. Absolutely. Thank so you very another, much. Um, yep. another issue I have is about, uh, um, I'm, I'm glad I guess mentioned something about affordability, that's the interest rate and the cost of finance. But still, uh, there's a lot to do with the relevance of the products we have. Um, I didn't see anyone from the, um, on the microfinance uh, side. I know that we have an association of microfinance institutions. Yes. And whenever I talk uh, about financial inclusion, my mind uh, goes to microfinance. Sure. So those are the people that serve the low, the low end clients who cannot afford yeah. the banks. Okay. Um, and uh, I'm just uh, finishing up. I know that there's a, a kind of one size fits all. So you, you find that there are all the products in the banks and the, the microfinance institutions almost all the same, and they may not serve the purpose or the true needs of the, the customers. Absolutely. Yeah. I think she raises important points. Um, may I answer you on the microfinance institution? He dropped us today. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> so uh, we had invited yeah. him. Another thing I wanted to talk about. I think we I can come back to it. Let's uh, let, let get them to answer because otherwise we're going to lose the points that you raise. One, the issue around collateral. The second issue around variety of uh, products that we have in the market. And of course, uh, uh, including the microfinance sector. How do we best do that? Vice Governor, do yeah. you want to come in? Gentleman, lady, please feel free to come in. I think let's uh, look at why a collateral in the first place. Uh, a collateral is uh, to cover a financial institution that is allowing a, a loan, to granting a loan to somebody to, to be at least covered should anything happen. bad happen. Mm. And uh, the haircuts are really normal practices. Uh, you have instances where, for instance, if you have to exercise a collateral, you might not exactly get the, the same amount um, of, of the loan. And the, the, the frameworks we use are not like really specific to Rwanda. And uh, we, are, we, are, we are always open to review the, the, the system uh, like now we are implementing uh, Basel 2, Basel 3. Sure. It's even going to be more stringent and more, more mm. complex uh, so that uh, you have the stability in the first place. Is, the, is there room to be, to be creative and break the mold a little bit here? I think the creativity came in with what uh, Jackie mentioned as a point uh, of what are the assets that can be allowable. Here we are talking today of if you have shares, if you have um, bought uh, into the government bond, if you have movable assets, all those can be what now about allowable. If I have got gods? You that's allowable, so capital is allowed. So th that's maybe it's uh, it's going to be a and combined. fairly valued, Vice Governor. You fairly value my god rather than uh, taking the, the urban valuation no, the, of the, the gold. The valuation is, is another issue. And maybe you can make yeah. a, you can uh, Please, comment on the valuation. Um, sure. On the valuation yeah. side, we have, uh, we have uh, uh, an institute of uh, valuators and uh, it is certified by our, it, it has a standard and uh, certified by the Ministry of Infrastructure and uh, together with the, with the, the land min, uh, ministry, the, the land uh, okay. So uh, you've got government involved in it. Yes, okay. it is involved. So we trust the government a and bit we, on that front. we we must try we must try to trust the valuation reports and okay. uh, banks are really relying on the valuation given out by by those valuators. So so I think uh, if uh, if maybe we need to review the the standard for valuator for, for valuers 
that that's one point uh, that maybe can look be looked at but otherwise uh, banks are using uh, certified values okay do you yeah. want to come in on the point about the collateral or should we move on and talk about the variety of the products that are being offered and access to the microfinance uh, yeah but i think i'll touch on the issue of the collateral i think the, always the challenge is strike a balance between having protecting the investors who have put their money in the financial system and and depositors money the money that banks are lending out belongs to me and you so in a way as we lend out we need to protect the interest of those people yeah. having said that still we need to look at on their side the, the consumer i think so th that balance is always is a debate that's going on globally and we i think we we still have work to do but i just want to touch on another thing i always want to celebrate the fact that today we have our land in Rwanda well registered and with ownership document, it's a step. I, 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 I want to sound this in the right context. So we have moved miles. So at least today, in the spirit of getting everyone to have the right to access a loan, to engage in economic activities, registering land and giving ownership to everyone is today, I think for me is, is something that we need to celebrate. Sure. The other thing is the issue of credit reference bureau. So one time on one side was talking about collateral being so high, but look at also, the more we use the credit reference bureau information, yeah. risk assessment and the protection of the investors and the others, it's going to be easier. So we are also on the very, uh, I mean, we are on track on that side also. Sure. So the point I'm trying to emphasize here, that I think we need to first look at the whole ecosystem yeah. as we talk about uh, uh, some of these issues. The last point still on the ecosystem uh, uh, as how it plays together is also consumer protection and the consumer education. Mm. So time is coming when someone will say, okay, uh, go to bank A, you give this term sheet, and I'm like, no, 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 let me go to bank C. That's the time I'm, long, I'm longing to see. So the more we educate our people yes. to, to choose the right product and the, on the best terms, is when we are going to more to achieve. I actually have a question on education, uh, but we'll come to it later. But you, do you want to talk about, do you want to address that? To but we also need to talk about the issue of the variety of products that we are offering. Yeah. Because otherwise, we know the banks will always come with the first one that they have on their books yeah. and not be creative. Yes, please come in. Sure. Uh, just on that point is that, uh, to her question is this, financial lending is for what purpose? Is it at a private level or on a commercial level? There are different sources of finance now today in Rwanda than they were yes. a couple of years ago. And the com on the commercial side, you're looking at now the capital markets coming into the ecosystem here. Yes. So whereas before you could ha you would be borrowing from the same institution for different purposes, yeah. you now have a variety of places that you can actually sure. pool and, and, and get financing from. So I think uh, we've just started that, yeah. but I'm sure if you were to ask the same question three, four, five years from now, yeah. you'd get a, a much different answer. I agree. Though yeah. the word capital markets frightens a lot of people and uh, many of us don't understand what it means and what it stands for. But uh, Jackie, do you want to come in on the, on the I product? I want to side? tackle this point of, um, of uh, diff uh, product diversification yeah. by, uh, by starting by the point raised by Eric about education. I think um, as uh, our market mature, yeah. The, the the banks sh sh shall follow. It's it's a, it's it's a, it's, a, it's 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 something that uh, banks are creating product that fits the market. Right. And once the the, the, the demand we look we we, we need, will be more sophisticated. I'm sure banks will follow. Uh, it's it's a it's a maturity question of uh, of, of our market. Yeah. And that's where we are heading. As the government is investing much in education, sure. uh, I'm, I'm sure banks will follow. I see Mr. Disruptor yeah. wants to come in. She touched on something that I had to comment on. <laughs> Please. And, and is it a demand-driven demand economy or supply-driven? Yes. Yeah. I think it's supply-driven. Uh, well, I think right now it's both because now you see, uh, with Vice Governor, with all respect, yeah. you see, like, I'll give you an example with Tigo. Or, or, uh, or Airtel, they, they've, they've worked with the financial system to have uh, interest-bearing uh, accounts on their mobile accounts. This is innovation. That it is innovation. It's a, it's a variety of products that was never there mm -hmm. before. And I think is more to come in terms of 
insurance, uh, being able to get a policy within five minutes, uh, and, and being able to compare insurance policies for your, your, your house, for example, in, in, in a matter of 10 minutes, Absolutely. And, and buying one. These are things that had never been propagated before, but I think technology allows the closer contact between the vendor and the buyer, and, and this variety will definitely take place, and I think it started already. Absolutely. Okay, let's take uh, some more questions. Perhaps. Uh, thank you. Um, uh, my question uh, goes to uh, Jackie. And they have, uh, for everyone, I have a question. I don't know if uh, I'm allowed. I'll allow you to, because I've got two other gentlemen. Okay, thank questions. you. Uh, then I take two. Quickly. Uh, uh, for Jackie, I think um, she was uh, making a testimony uh, with regard to uh, the creation of uh, a conducive environment uh, to promote uh, the financial inclusion. Uh, in Rwanda, made by uh, the government. But on the other side, I, I would like to know, you know, uh, financial inclusion is about uh, uh, private-public partnership. But I would like to know, what is the strategy of uh, Rwanda, Association, uh, Rwanda Bank Association uh, with regard to having for every bank a financial inclusion agenda. Do you think the commercial banks are supporting the government in terms of uh, achieving the national target with regard to financial inclusion? Thank you very much. Uh, Jackie, oh, do you want to ask the second question? Yeah, uh, the second question is, um, I think, can go to uh, Karu Retwa. Yeah. Yeah, you know, uh, one of the financial inclusion uh, drivers I think the, 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 the microfinance sector uh, can take a, a big uh, or a, a very important uh, role, can play a very important role. But, uh, and I know that uh, currently now we have uh, those you know, uh, technology of uh, information are developing, are being developed in Rwanda. I would like to know how do you think you can create a kind of synergy between the microfinance institutions and the digital financial services and or mobile financial services to accelerate financial inclusion in our country. Thank you. Thank you. Jackie, um, let's be the, as brief as we uh, can because we're running out of time. The question is, uh, is about how uh, member banks of RBA, uh, Rwanda Bankers Association, uh, uh, taking forward the financial inclusion ag agenda. Actually, uh, it's it's uh, it, it is something that uh, uh, everyone is re I think realizing uh, with the, the dri with the, with the association driving banks on board on some of the activities that are inf uh, emphasizing or looking at uh, the financial inclusion, including uh, campaign uh, and uh, what I've uh, noted with the banks is that uh, because the competition is very high and uh, uh, some are, are fighting for s the same, 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 same customers. Mm. They are trying to create, to create um, a mode of, uh, or strategies to, to go and deeper in the villages. That's why you, can, you are seeing um, some are introducing agent banking sure. so that they can reach for th those who are not really served uh, or underserved by, by others. So I think that's one way of, uh, of, of, of act actually by creating more product and uh, uh, trying to reach those who are not really on, on already on the, on the, on the, on the final or, or underserved. Yeah. That, that's the, uh, actually, that's the response to the financial inclusion by banks. C can I perhaps maybe just point out that perhaps what is absent from uh, his question is a platform where government and the bankers actually discuss and implement uh, uh, the financial inclusion agenda. Uh, perhaps actually, that platform can be created. Uh, actually, we are, we, are, we are on board. We are on board. We, are, we have steering committees uh, under the central bank on financial inclusion, okay. where banks are represented. Okay. I think. We, I think. Okay, we, so we, the structures we, are there. Yeah, the okay. structures are there. David. Yes, sir. Thank you for the question of uh, accelerating the MFIs, the SACOs, into the financial services industry, uh, or or at least adhering to most of the products that are available in the market. I think there are two major functions here. Uh, there's technology 
and there's also an education and an awareness campaign that have to be driven. These will have to go hand in hand. The technology facilitates, and, and, and what, what happens is, if, if all these MFIs and SACOs, which are usually using rudimentary tools, uh, Excel sheets, et cetera, et cetera, can move from that to a digitized form factor, uh, that could be a huge way of connecting to them. And what, by, what I mean by that is, uh, for example, recently, uh, the Umarangi Sakos was able to uh, procure uh, a shared platform, a core banking application system. And uh, this allows systems such as myself, as a switch, as a national clearinghouse, to connect to them, to mm -hmm. offer them the same services that I'm offering to the banks and, and the mo mobile sure. financial services uh, industry. Uh, another thing is uh, you need to actually educate not only the industry, but also the customers on the benefits that drives this. So if, if you were to take, for example, have uh, uh, the MFIs working with the commercial banks. The commercial banks have been doing this for a while now. Uh, they don't have to really compete. They can actually have synergies in terms of uh, can I liquidate a commercial bank to facilitate me mm. with electronic banking systems uh, if, I'm not, if I don't have the capital to do, the, do sure. so right now. So those are the different synergies that I think we can actually facilitate within the short term yeah. to actually cover huge milestones in the, in the economy. Thank you, David. We've yeah. run out of time, but I want to take the last two questions. So if you can have one question each very briefly, then we'll be able to, 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 to cater for you. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, <coughs> I like that uh, when talking about financial inclusion, we, tr we touch a bit of cost. Because there is a, an important part of financial inclusion is about uh, affordability. Uh, even if we can have access uh, at any cost, then, then there is a problem. So. Uh, I want to just to come back to maybe the, the banks again because uh, we have seen that um, when you're talking about cost, the, the, the operating cost of, of running these uh, uh, infrastructures uh, is still high. And uh, one of the reasons may be uh, because uh, maybe uh, financial institutions are, are competing on infrastructure. Maybe by, by, by sharing some infrastructures and competing f maybe for, 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 for some product or services, mm. this can bring down some costs and, and, uh, and make affordable uh, some of the services. So uh, my question uh, goes to, to Jackie on how can we uh, maybe bring the, the financial institution, work together, share some infrastructure so that we bring the cost down to, to give affordable services to our, cli sure. our clients. Absolutely. Is that possible, uh, Jackie, quickly? Is, it is possible, and uh, I think it will have banks have been trying to, 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 to try solutions together, and I think as the market grows and as, uh, as sophistication of products comes on, on board, I'm sure that, that that's the only route. Do you have some, some examples, perhaps, where banks could uh, potentially the, have the been working together? There is a, a system that banks wanted to buy uh, on... A, a, and blacklisted uh, KYC uh, 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 blacklisted the, on how to, to search. It's a, it's a product okay. to search for okay. for blacklisted people, which it's a heavy investment, and uh, really uh, we don't have uh, a lot of blacklisted at at a national level. And it's okay. Banks you can say it. You can say it. Why does they paying their debts? It's, it's uh, a yeah, nice thing yeah. to yeah. say. And the okay. banks are looking at uh, having uh, that infrastructure together sure. so that can co cut costs for, for many. Ab absolutely yeah. fantastic. Okay. Yes, thank you. Uh, I want um, Jean Bosco Yachu coming from Access to Finance Rwanda, uh, a company, private company f uh, promoting financial inclusion in Rwanda. So okay. I'm so glad that CNBC has thought of this kind of uh, talk <laughs> and debate. Thank you. And You've got a comment. So I grateful. Imagine. So. Uh, mine is not actually a question, but it's a, a comment uh, or an idea that I want to share. Well, we know that those people who are excluded in the financial sector, most of them are in the, the rural uh, settings and they're into agriculture. And uh, now serving them, it requires some innovations in terms of actually products and services that address their needs in that sector they're in. So that's something that actually financial... Uh, services providers should think of mm -hmm. so that we have uh, we accelerate the financial inclusion and i need actually to uh, probably a party that is not here which is actually the savings groups 
promoters. They are doing a great job to prepare those people who can save 100 per week actually to move, uh, to educate them so that actually they are linked to the former financial institutions. So that's something that uh, is happening and under the Ministry of Finance and the Central Bank supporting that. Absolutely. So the Thank last is, uh, oh. I mean, the last comment is, uh, Kevin talked about the, the private-public partnership. I want to add there, private, the people element. So private, public, and people partnership. Because people are key. They want the right services. They want innovations. And they want collaboration of players so that they get the right service. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you very much indeed. On that note, I have to thank you very much all for coming today and participating in our debate on financial inclusion here in uh, Rwanda. Uh, let me thank my guest, Dr. Monique Antanza. Bagana, Vice Governor, Central Bank of Rwanda, uh, Eric Rugamba, Director General, Financial Sector Directorate, Minister of Finance, Jackie Umuguaneza, Executive Sector, Rwanda Bankers Association, and uh, David Karuletwa, Chief Operations Officer at uh, RSWITCH. Thank you for watching at home. Until next time, goodbye.